Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to um, conclude um, the story about limits of the sequences um, with one particular kind of sequences um, which well occurs quite often in uh, in the future material which I'm going to present. Um, these are sequences of ratio of two polynomials. Now this lecture actually is the final within limits for sequences and the next one would be I'll talk about the limits of the functions and that would be basically an introduction to derivatives. Um, this lecture is part of the whole course which I do recommend you to take in its entirety on unizor.com um, it's uh, much better to, to, to go to this website rather than um, listen to this lecture from uh, YouTube or any other source because the website contains first of all um, very detailed notes for each lecture and secondly um, you can be a registered student and uh, you can take exams which is very very important uh, the site is free so basically you can do it as many times as you want to take any kind of exam until you will feel comfortable. Alright, so back to the limits and again a particular case of the limits for uh, sequences each member of which is a ratio of two polynomials. Okay, so here is what I actually mean. Consider we have one polynomial which is basically a function of n where n is order number right and it's polynomial uh, which means it will look like this so a are coefficients, n is basically the order number, and uh, this is polynomial where p is decreasing powers, we are raising our n. And then we have another polynomial, similar one, with different uh, powers. This is B, not A. Okay, so this is polynomial of N of the power P, and this is the polynomial of N power Q. Obviously, A0 and B0 are not equal to zero, otherwise our polynomial would be a different uh, power. So A0 and B0 are not equal to, to zero. Now, what we are talking about is a sequence which can be represented as a ratio of these polynomials. And by the way, in the previous lecture where I was talking about certain examples of indeterminate forms of, uh, of the limits, I did use a couple of polynomials as examples. All right, so how can we approach this? All right. So basically, it's um, quite simple. Here is what, I, what I'm proposing to do. I will write P of n factoring out n to the power of P. Now, n to the power of P, I presume, again, P is the highest power, right? So I am factoring out uh, the P and n to the power of P. So what remains? From this member I will have a, a0, from this member I will have a1 and to the power p minus 1 minus p, which is minus 1. And the last uh, power would be, well, the last two powers, the last two members would be a p minus 1 and to the power of 1 minus p 
or minus p plus 1 and the last one would be n to the power of minus p and q of n I will do exactly the same thing and the highest power is n to the q's right power of q and remaining would be b0 b1 n to the power of minus 1 plus b uh, well etc I forgot to put etc here and the last couple of members would be q minus 1 again my bed it's b and n to the power minus q plus 1 and the last one would be b q n to the power minus q okay now why did I do it well for a very very simple reason because now my p to the n over q to the n is equal to I will divide n to the power of p by n to the power of q I will get n to the power of p minus q and then I have a ratio now why is it better for a very simple reason each one of these and there are only p of them is infinit infinitesimal each one of these and there are only q of them is infinitesimal which means that the whole thing is a sequence which converges to a0 over b0 right because all these are converging to 0 and there is only a finite number of these p of these and q of these so the limit of the numerator is a0 limit of denominator is b0 none of them is equal to 0 as we have agreed in the very beginning so the ratio is the limit now so this thing is a limit it's a converging sequence converging to this concrete real number b0 is not equal to 0 so everything is fine now what about this one well this is n to some power we well, you know what happens with n to some power if this power is positive it grows infinitely grows if power is equal to 0 it's basically a uh, constant 1 and if power is negative then the whole thing is diminishing down to zero, right? So it's infinitesimal. Which means that I can actually have the rule here. If p greater than q, so the power of the numerator, the power of the polynomial which is in the numerator, is greater than one which is in the denominator, then I have an infinitely growing there is a little detail here because it's infinitely growing question is it's growing by absolute value uh, but depending on the sign of this basically depending on the sign of a0 divided by b0 it will be either plus infinity or minus infinity so intimately infinitely growing by absolute value So it might actually infinitely decreasing to minus infinity or infinitely increasing to plus infinity. Now, if P is equal to Q, then the whole thing converges to this number because this is, this is equal to 1, a constant. And finally, if P is less than Q, so the polynomial in the numerator is of a lesser degree than denominator, then the whole thing is infinitesimal infinitesimal so that's the verdict 
you don't really have to pay attention to all these coefficients which are with n to a lesser powers the highest powers these are all you need to know to determine whether there is or there is no limit and if there is which one is it so if n is equal to p uh, sorry if p is equal to q then there is a limit and it's a0 over b0 now if p is not equal to q then it's either infinitely growing by absolute value to plus or minus infinity or it's infinitesimal when it goes to zero but well, that's it about polynomials about true polynomials now i have a little um more um advanced if you wish topic um what if it's not a polynomial polynomial means this is integer this is integer minus one minus two etc down to zero what if i have any kind of powers so let me just do it again and i will give you an example what what i mean any powers example is simple for instance i have n square plus square root of n divided by n to the power of let's say 3 plus 3 n square plus cubic of n plus 1 something like this so when not only integer powers because this is actually what it's n to the power of one half and this is n to the power of one third so what if i have any kind of um power functions of n connected with pluses or minuses with some coefficients whatever coefficients are so let me just write it down in some general notation so i have um uh, i have a sequence of two functions of n ratio of them now the function u of n is it's a addition or subtraction of members each one of them is some kind of a coefficient and n to some kind of power and power can be any it can be integer it can be rational or can be irrational n to the power of pi for instance whatever i mean any kind of fantasy uh and the last one would be a p uh n to the power of uh not p just some kind of maximum m to the power of p m so i have m well actually m plus one members here each member is some kind of coefficient and n to some kind of a power and power can be anything and let's just agree from the very beginning that p0 is maximal among all these powers that's very important the same way as with uh, polynomial when on the first place i had the n to the maximum power um, because everything depends on the n to the maximum power so here also this is maximum power i suppose now same thing v of n would be but you know what since i'm using u i will use u here if you don't mind doesn't really matter but coefficient just to differentiate from the previous case um, v0 n to the power let's say q0 plus v1 n to the power of q1 plus etc plus u n so this sum contains n members um, n to the power of p uh, q sorry q n And again, I assume that 
same thing as P0 is maximum of P i's. I assume Q0 is maximum of all Q. Okay? So this is the top member. Top member in the top power. And I will do exactly the same as in the previous case when we were talking about polynomials. Namely, I will factor out n to the power of p0, the maximum. So u of n would be equal to n to the power of p0. And what do I have here? u0 plus whatever else, all other members which contain each one of them will end in some kind of a negative less than zero power. I have assumed that P0 is maximum, which means P1 is smaller, P2 is smaller, Pm is smaller. So if I, if I factor out P0, whatever is left would be in this case P1 minus P0, which is negative, because P0 is greater. And everything else will be negative. So all these would be some coefficients and n to some negative powers and only a uh, finite number of them, m, which means this would be my infinitesimal. Same thing with vn. It would be v0 from here plus whatever else would be n to the power which is negative many members, actually n members, each of them contain some coefficient and n to the, n to, to the negative power. And again, the same thing as before. As soon as you know that the power is negative and n goes to infinity, it means this is infinitesimal. Finite number of infinitesimals would add up into infinitesimal, which means that this would be my convergent to u1 sequence and this will be convergent to v0 sequence and when I divide one by another I will have n to the power of p0 minus q0 times u0 divided by v0 plus some kind of alpha infinitesimal because the ratio would be convergent to u0, u0 plus v0, u0 divided by, by v0. So if it's convergent, I just put plus alpha, which is infinitesimal variable. And now we can make exactly the same conclusion. If p0 greater than q0, this is a constant, even plus in infinitely small, but it's still a uh, bounded variable. The variable which has um, a limit is bounded, as we know. So, and this would be in infinitely increasing if p0 is greater than, than q0. So, the whole thing would be infinitely increasing. So, if this highest power is greater than this highest power, we will have infinitely increasing um, sequence. If they are equal to each other, then their difference is 0, m to the power of 0 is, is 1. So the whole thing would converge to u0 over v0, the main coefficients. And finally, if p0 is less than q0, this is the negative power. So n to the negative power would be infinitesimal um, sequence times constant still infinitesimal. So again, as before, all we need in the case we have not necessarily polynomial kind of expressions, but any kind of a power functions of n connected with pluses or minuses with, with coefficients in the numerator and denominator, which is a pretty wide class of functions. So for all these, all you need to know is the highest power of n and its coefficient in the numerator and the highest power of n with its coefficient in the denominator. And if the highest powers are the same, then you do have a limit. It's result of the division between uh, coefficients at the highest power. If 
they are different, then you obviously have, if P0 is greater than Q0, you have infinity as a limit by absolute value, so it's plus infinity or minus infinity, but absolute value would be, would be infinity. Depends on the sign of U0 and V0. And in case P0 is less than Q0, then you will have infinitesimal value, uh, infinitesimal sequen uh, se sequence uh, uh, U divided by V. Okay, basically that's it. Um, we have talked about one particular class of um, sequences, which can be represented uh, either in a relatively simpler case as ratio of two polynomials, or it's in a little bit more complicated case as ratio of two functions. Each one of them is basically um, a sum of n to some power. So as long as you have that, you can always just by examining the highest, the members with highest powers in the numerator and denominator, you can actually answer what's the limit. Just looking at, at, at these two main members of, uh, of this ratio. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.